Hey everybody, Rodaman here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 2 of Space Haven. Picking up where we left off, we had queued up a considerable amount of the ship construction here. And I just wanted to go over a few tips and tricks. One, uh, I'm going to be renaming the ship after myself. And we'll do the HSS Rodaman. And then if I, um, if I zoom out here, we could double check the derelict here. The derelict doesn't have anything left, but um, less than than desirable meat, I guess, is how to put it. Um, all right, so at this point, we're just waiting for a lot of things to construct. Now, I wanted to go over some of the builds here. So one is that the doors that lead to the grow room, um, they can have their vents shut so that the CO2 that we produce in here isn't leaked out. I also wanted to go over uh, the concept of min-maxing. So for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm trying to build so that you can understand what I'm building because the UI can be a little bit cumbersome and hard to understand and the game is a little dense. So as a result, I have a very open floor print here. Um, it is not efficient, but it is easier to understand. Um, once you get better at this game, you can design your ships to be more compact and more space efficient, but it will also be harder for new players to get what's going on. Um, so for instance, uh, wisely you would put a power generator behind walls, because if I, let me pause just a moment and go to the comfort overlay. As you can see, any jobs around the shuttle hangar or the power generator, specifically the power generator, they're, they're very, very uncomfortable. Basically, what will happen is if I don't wall this off, uh, working around it will have a very negative impact on uh, everybody. Um, and that's something that I can do, uh, you know, in the future is to design this ship uh, with more comfort in mind. But we'll just continue what we're doing here. Getting the rest of the ship constructed. So a lot of what I will need to start uh, space travel is already included here. Uh, we've got shuttles and a grow room and a barracks but I'll continue adding um, because we still have resources left on our home mining base that we can utilize for ship construction purposes I just hope there aren't too many construction accidents on the way there so we almost have the toilet and grow bed up same with the dining room oh, here's the toilet So the tutorial here is prompting me for grow bed with lights. Uh, that will be next. Oh, and it's already built. Now, as you can see, the game already detected that the room in here. Oh, no, it's saying water purifier. The room in here um, should require doors closed. So if I go to vents here. The vent for this door is closed, um, and the vent for all the other doors are open. And this is as a result of uh, of the the AI, or rather the game knowing, oh, you know, we don't need to vent CO2 around the rest of the base. That just wouldn't really make sense, so the door is closed. I could open up the vent, but then I would just be CO2 scrubbing with my um, with my gas scrubber uh, the excess CO2. It wouldn't be efficient. Not at all. Alright, so I'm just fixing up some of the walls here so that they're uh, symmetrical. I believe that puts them symmetry. So this is the center line. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yep. 
All right, so let's start linking the power. Uh, then I'm going to need one more power node. Oh, uh, no, this power node is getting constructed. I just need to make the, uh, the block resource for it, but everybody's asleep. So we're getting pretty close to needing what we'll need. So if you take a look here, uh, most of this ship here is sort of temperate. Uh, the farm's a little bit cooler, and I might need to do something about it. We'll, we'll see. Um, given time, the thermal regulators might be able to warm that up without me having to do very much. Another thing we could do is just to keep um, some of the doors that I'm likely to not need closed, just keep them, force them open. Um, you would close doors if you are trying to stop uh, fires from spreading or uh, things of that nature. You can force doors closed and locked. Uh, let's say you had a fire in your power generating room. Uh, one thing you could do, for instance, is to open the vent for the X1 airlock after putting everybody... Uh, you know, somewhere in the, the bow of the ship, let's say, locking these doors, closing the vents, venting out all of the oxygen from uh, the X1 airlock. But then, because these were closed vents, um, you wouldn't get uh, this... You wouldn't, you wouldn't get, um, you know, the oxygen vented out from the front of the ship, uh, which allows people to continue breathing, etc. Alright, so now we have, uh... Oh, I am... have a teeny bit of missing power. That's okay. We'll build that up. Alright, so now it's telling me to build a water purifier. This is going to be a... Uh, a very necessary thing for uh, plants and, and those sort of resources. We could get it, um... Let's see, we have our tool, tools facility here. I'd like to find a spot that is not being used for much else. I can put it there. And the tutorial won't steer you wrong. You can basically just, uh, whatever it tells you to build, just build. Now, I am also going to need... Uh, as you can see in the systems here, I will need the hyperdrives. Now, I'm planning on eventually having two sets of hyperdrives. This helps you move heavier ships. Uh, but for iteration one, basically the start of my ship, I'm not going to be able to afford two hyperdrives. So, one, one will have to suffice. Now, as you can see, I do have a little bit of, um of uh, symmetry going on in the base with these power nodes. And this is just so that if one, obviously this here is sort of a linchpin. Uh, build a shutter, shuttle hangar, and mining pod. So what I want to do is actually build two mining pods uh, because I'm just going to steal two of the mining pods that are over there. Um, so if I go to airlock and go to pod hangar, uh, we can add some mining pods to the ship. Now I'm running low on certain blocks. I'm also going to need a recycler as well. Okay, it looks to me because of the vents or lack thereof that a thermal regulator may be needed in this room here. Um, so what I'm going to do is edit my hall. Where's that? Okay, yeah, that wall's there. Like that. I'm going to move these pod hangers actually down a little bit. Uh, the reason being is it would be ideal for them to be as close to storage as possible. because the miners are going to uh, continually 
Actually, you know what? I don't even need to edit my haul. I, uh... All I need to do is just delete one of these walls here. I'll do it on both sides. All right, I believe it's, yeah, it's rest time, as you can see, the the day schedule's up here. I did increase my UI size uh, so that it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. And most of the log here is just people that are going to have conditions put on them you know oh i'm wearing a space suit i'm uncomfortable oh someone uh, insulted me uh i'm now comfortable again so on and so forth a lot of this information is extraneous it's it's a lot of effort to keep up and uh it's not all that necessary to read all right so now let's go ahead and add um all right now it's telling me to build a recycler i believe that might if memory serves, that might be the last thing I'm going to need. All right. So we'll we'll heat up our plant room, our grow room. And then I, I will set up uh, things to be grown. Let's do fruits, vegetables, fibers, meat, and meat. There we go. All right. So as far as a recycler goes... Um, Recyclers are obviously going to be most useful when used uh, while salvaging other ships and, and whatnot. That's their... It's, it's a way for you to not really run out of resources. Um, as long as there are derelicts for you to salvage. That's why it's the first for you to build. And there it goes. And there's the heater. Uh, so, for the jobs here, um, these scraps might as well be added continuously. And the last thing is going to be a hyperdrive. I already have the navigation console up here. So, the hyperdrive, if I go back down to the system, I'm going to want to add it around here, which means uh, expanding the hull blocks. I do hope I have enough hull blocks or I'll have to figure out another solution but um, let's go ahead and build those hull blocks the way they are uh, how many hull blocks do I have in storage over here very very few I have a little bit of uh, a lot of the other blocks you know I have very low water as well but that just could be yeah because I'm not currently uh, queued to manufacture it all right, so now, the, wow, those hull blocks got installed quite quickly. Uh, here's my hyperdrive. And I will be, as I said, adding one to the other side at some point. Uh, so taking a look at temperature here, yes. It's now very temperature regulated. I might actually want a regulator at the front of the ship, or rather to spread my regulators out so that they, um, uh, they cover different ship parts. So I have one... Uh, back here, one here, one there. So once this, the hyperdrive is done, I will have everything I need to do first jump. So if I check the map here, everything within this solar system will be jumpable. For me to leave the solar system, I'll need some extra stuff, but, uh, but that, that, that's kind of a ways off, fortunately. Now taking a look, if I require more hull blocks, because I've run out, I can just scrap it from my own ship. We'll see. It could just be the fact that they haven't manufactured it. Now, if you're curious about whether they manufacture or not. Here's how to go find out. One, you could check hull scrap. Uh, I don't have any hull scrap left. The next one is, do I have infra blocks um, for hull blocks? Do I have uh, steel plates? I do have some steel plates that I can turn into hull blocks, and do I have carbon and base metals to turn into hull blocks? 
And the answer is yes, uh, I did indeed. So now uh, that the hyperdrive is done, uh, it's telling me to transfer resources. So if I zoom out a little bit, I'm going to say I want everything here. Is that true? Yeah. Everything here transferred over to my ship. And then I'm also... I'm not going to execute a hyperspace jump just yet because A, no one lives on this ship. I actually haven't told uh, anyone. Okay, so there's some unreachable areas here with this current hyperdrive design. Uh, this will be probably the first thing I'm gonna fix. Um, that isolated area. That's easy to fix. All I'd need to do is bump this out just like that. I might have enough hull blocks for that, we'll see. But now what they're doing is they're taking everything over on this mining base and bringing it over to my uh, my brand new ship, emptying out its, its cargo and all that. Uh, one thing that I like to do is to... Well, I'll continue the meat. One, one thing is that you'll continually have more stuff to transfer because your grow beds will continue growing. And then you have to transfer crew. Uh, right now, as you can see, all of my crew is on the HSB Atlas. Uh, and then once I'm done transferring stuff over, I'm gonna have them head over to the new one. As you can see, uh, uh, my <laughs> Right now, it's a little, little blocked. Just a little blocked. So let's do a quick rundown. I've got a, a barely comfortable kitchen. I'll happily say it's barely comfortable. A pretty uncomfortable uh, toilet here. I need to add a light. Uh, the grow room's okay. It is saying that uh, the water needs are unmet. One thing I could do is if water is less than five, make it. I'm going to need to hop to a, a water asteroid promptly. That's going to be important. Right now what they're doing is they're delivering food that we grabbed from the mining base and putting into the kitchen and then grabbing the regular goods. And now uh, more goods will be delivered. And, you know, if I zoom out, I can see basically what's left to transfer. So energy rods are very, very important. They're going to keep power on your base. The hyper fuel allows you to jump. Um, and then you have all your construction blocks from hull blocks, infra, tech, energy, uh, soft, and uh, infra scrap. Or, well, I don't, infra scrap is just scrap. Um, other things you're definitely going to want to grab is stuff like uh, IV fluids and medicine because I'm not able to manufacture that right now. Uh, so it, it's obviously good to have that, a nice, you know, surplus of that so that, uh, in the case that someone gets uh, wounded, I have meds for them. And I'm just going to leave um, the game on full speed until my guys have transferred everything over. As you can see, the, the stockpiles here are uh, running low. I'm actually running through it, which is good. But it takes a few days to move everything over. It is a logistical uh, uh, undertaking. Now, initially, once you are spacefaring, um, what you're going to want to do is primarily just be adding the ability to manufacture resources on your ship. There is the possibility of combat, ship to ship combat, that is, but I would avoid that. Uh, I would avoid preparing for that early on because 
in the process of building uh, shields and weapons and all that, what you're going to end up doing is actually reducing the amount of um, construction that you'll even be able to do. So it, it's best, at least in my opinion, to make sure that you're able to manufacture every block from scrap mined materials. And that way, uh, you're never going to be dead in the water with no resources, right? You don't want to be in a situation where you can't make energy rods or hyperfuel and you're stuck. You don't want to be in a situation where you have some sort of damage to your ship and you can't make hull blocks to repair it, you know? So you have this gaping hole in your ship and everybody has to wear their spacesuits all the time, right? Those would be very bad situations. Uh, checking the CO2. Yeah, I do have a little bit of um, CO2 that is being leaked out, but obviously concentrations are higher. Um, as far as O2 goes, O2 is fine. No gas or, or smoke. Um, comfort is obviously terrible around the power generator, but fine everywhere else. Temperature is fine. Power is fine. So in this power screen, it's basically showing where power availability is um as you can see it is low down here it, i could improve that if i need to if i ever have brownouts uh one way to combat brownouts would be to add power capacity nodes which charge up and then can release elsewhere other than the generator so at this point we're probably pretty close to having everything moved over. Yeah, there's 104 additional items that need to get moved. And and this, one of the reasons why I had um, uh, two large storages is it's pretty easy to fill one up. But yeah, we've spent uh, quite a few days here now moving stuff over. I think what I'm going to do is stop the grows so that uh, we no longer are generating more stuff that we have to move over. Also keep in mind that you can't dismantle anything from this starter base. See, it's not like you can break down the mining base and bring those resources over. That's just not how it works. At this point, I am um, going to move oops, everybody over to the Rodama and have them sleep here. So I went to the crew management and just told them sleep on the Rodamont rather than um, on the HSB Atlas by uh, left and right clicking. Okay, so we're almost done transferring. As you can see, we uh, keep blocking up the, uh, the X1 airlock. But because the airlock is right next to our storage, uh, it's actually pretty quick to clear out. So here we go. This was actually the first time that we're sleeping on the new ship. Um, and also the first time we used our, you know, kit, our own kitchen and all that jazz. All right, so how close are we? Oh, uh, another thing I need to do before I forget is... If I click on not the pot itself, mining pot itself, but the dock, I can relocate the mining pods to my hangars so I don't have to make new ones. You could also have done this with the shuttle too, uh, but I find that setting up a new ship is a little bit faster if you just build your own shuttle. So now they're having their morning... Um, coffee, let's call it. Delivering food to the kitchen. And pulling the last of the resources over from the Atlas. There's a little bit left. Um, I'm just going to keep flagging all of it. Uh, one way to stop the continuous um, manufacture of resources is just to any redundant manufacturing processes. So 
for right now, the only redundant ones I have are the Recycler. I have a Recycler in my ship, and I have a Water Purifier in my ship. So I'm going to cancel it on the mining um, station so that I'm not making water or recycling things in two locations. Um, but things like this weaver here to make uh, fabrics, which is a used in soft blocks, I still might want to have that going. Because uh, I, I will have a limited amount of resources. So here is the last of the everything. We're very, very close to grabbing it all. Man, this has been a, been a while. Now, as you can see, I'm a little bit over my weight capacity here. Just a, just a tinge. Um, and that's what a second hyperdrive is going to help with. Uh, increasing my mass capacity. But probably before I even bother making a second one, I'll be focusing on manufacturing processes. So this has almost nothing left to transfer over. Given how difficult it can be early on to obtain hull blocks, infra blocks, soft blocks, stuff like that, it's going to be really, really important for you to take everything. Because you never know what you're going to need. You don't want to have a firefly at a gas situation, in other words. All right. So I'm going to actually tell them... Oh, there's a ship incoming. I'm actually going to tell them to stop... Um, manufacturing stuff over here now. I'm going to remove all the jobs. It's probably unnecessary, but I'm going to remove all the jobs so that we stop uh, working. Alright, so transfer is just one fabric. And now it's telling me to execute a hyperspace jump. Is that everything? Uh, it's everything but a little infra scrap. A ship just warped in, and I can hail them. And vision is not shared, visiting is not allowed, but trade is allowed. So I can trade with them, and you can see what they're offering, and what I have, what, what they want that I have. Um, so for instance... Here's how a trade looks. You add... Well, actually, hold on. Um, yeah. I want to select my ship. So I could say, I want one of your water. This is just an example. And I will give you... Um, one fabric. Right? And then... the. The way the trade works is the shuttle um, that you've set up, your shuttle pod will just run that trade. So here's the water and a little bit of credits. Now, as you can see, I have um, 91 credits. And the trade is done. Trade is a really useful tool if you don't have all the resources. If you're running very scarce with a certain type of resource, it allows you to, you know, supplement. All right, so at this point, I think we are ready to go for our first jump. So if I check the map here, there's really only one place to jump to, right? Not a whole lot of options. Um, so in your tab up here, in the view systems, I'm going to say prepare hyperspace. Uh, what this will do is it will lock down and restrict the use of your mining pods and your shuttle so that no one gets left behind. And then someone who is skilled in operations, like Slobian here, if I take a look at his skill, or piloting rather, uh, is charging up the jump. The jump now is ready. And I can say execute. So what it's telling me is Upon jumping, I will be leaving behind the shuttle and two miners, and of course, the entire base. And yes, uh, I'm not planning on keeping that. And 
Then I'll select where I'm jumping to. Which is obviously the next system over. Uh, now, in this screen, you can pick where you want to deploy. So as you can see, all that's here is just another ship to trade. And if I wanted to trade with it, I could set up a new trade. Um, they've got a little bit of credits, so maybe I sell them things that I could... Uh, renewable resource stuff. So I'm going to... Uh, let's see. I'm going to buy a little water and sell sell some stuff to them. Just because I know that my uh, my water and ice is a little lower. Uh, my hull block's a little lower too, I s suppose. Because I did kind of build wide here, but they don't have hull blocks for sale. So we'll run this little trade where I'm grabbing my resources and bringing them over to them. And they're going to bring their resources and run them over to me. And there's the resources I asked for, plus the credits. And then uh, we'll go ahead and just jump again. There's really nothing in this system to stick around for. So let's go on out of here. So given this choice here, um, this has a derelict and uh, materials to make hall blocks. Here doesn't seem to really have anything. So yeah, I will go to where there are resources as I am resource arrived. So the next jump has some water, carbon, another derelict and um, energy fuel. So let's deploy. And now you, you have the choice of exactly where you wanna set your sh ship up to. Uh, I'm gonna set my ship up next to the derelicts and all the other mining um, resources. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is grab my, um, what time of the day is it? Okay. Draft and enter my shuttle. Because I'm going to clear the derelict. And then I'm also going to say mine out the carbon and base metals. But because I only have a... I only have a um, uh, recycler. Uh, my the resources that I get are going to be hev heavily relied um, upon salvage initially until I can manufacture from base. So here, uh, as you can see, they have like a defunct airlock. Um, so what I'm going to need to do is sort of EVA my way over. Oh no, they, they have a working airlock. Okay. Sometimes you need to EVA, sometimes not. Alright, so every ship that you enter has a possibility of combat. As you can see, there is quite a lot of uh, space bugs here for me to have to deal with. And then there's an also a possibility of adding to your crew because all of these new ships here could also have sleeper pods uh, where you'd be able to add people to your crew. There's also a system, of pris uh, yeah, system for prisoners as well. All right, so now the MAS Thunderchild is all set. I'm going to tell all my guys that they are off draft. I'm going to undraft the uh, shuttle pod as well. And we are going to want to transfer, uh, select all, but hold control and deselect the, uh, the unsavory meats. I don't think I'm quite that starved. And then, of course, uh, salvage. And unfortunately, what I really needed most, which is probably hull blocks, they have a low amount on, but um, that's okay. You can't, you know, no need to be choosy, right? All right, so we'll accelerate time, and we're just going to be breaking down this derelict 
for our own resources. Now, for interstellar travel, I'm going to need to build hypersleep chambers. So, hypersleep chambers are required. Let me go out to the uh, galaxy view. Hypersleep chambers are required when you jump solar system to solar system. So, you can see there's a lot of solar systems here. Um, I'm going to need to build it once I get to this point. Uh, so, that would be a very good next thing to focus on. Uh, but so would resource manufacturing. It would be good if I could um, make metals and make electronics and things like that. Also keep in mind, uh, the ships incoming, they won't all be friendly. Now this says it's a civilian ship coming in seven hours, but sometimes uh, pirates will come and they will fire upon you and, and you ought to be ready to cut and run if that is the case. Uh, unless, of course, you have, you know, weapons on your your ship, which I currently do not, do not have. So I have a recycler. Uh, I think what I'm going to get is the metal refinery. That will be the, the first thing I add. Um, a microweaver would be great too. And... Just sort of curious what I have space for. Things like an item fabricator is not really needed uh, early on. Maybe electron. Well, I don't have space for electronics yet. As you can see, we are uh, getting backed up. On the pods here. Another thing I could do, uh, just to make people a little bit more comfortable, is adding some things of comfort to uh, where they like to unwind. So a little uh, a little arcade machine and jukebox, albeit a little expensive, it could go a long way. So here's the ship, um, and if I you know, obviously I'm given the choice to trade with them. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is continue to sell my fabrics uh, for credits. Because I'm able to grow those. Now, I should probably retool my grow room um, at some point when I have excess material to use better space. Because I could do the 2 by one grow grow rooms and have a lot more of them. So all of the goods that were on the Thunderchild, I've already carried over, or at least the ones I want. Now there's an argument to be had that, yeah, maybe someone wants to buy the uh, alien meat, but um, I'm okay with ditching it. So as you can see, now it's a lot more comfortable here. Uh, also, I did mention the light in the bathroom, right? Uh, that, it could, I could, I could, understandably, it would be tough to go to the bathroom in the complete dark, so we'll get that set up as well. All right, so now the steel plates. We'll do if less than five, we'll make steel plates. Got our metal refinery. And the microweaver, if less than five, we'll uh, manufacture fabrics. Actually, you know what? This is sort of continuous because I don't, I might be wrong, but I don't think fibers are really used for anything else, so. We'll just set it up like that. So the first thing that I want to do is to make sure that I'm able to manufacture all the things I'm going to be required to, to keep a ship running. And then I'm going to start uh, working towards comfort and uh, ship defenses and the like. So while we salvage them, as you can see, we've got our miners here uh, grabbing all the base metals. Okay, that trade ship has left. And another one is incoming, a Cult of New Haven 
shit. Did you just break? <laughs> yeah, someone damaged the kitchen. Of course he did. So now, uh, the discomfort that we grabbed, that we had, um, working around this uh, power generator that's out in the open, we lost a lot of that uh, by our very comfortable crew room. Now there's a little bit of hull scrap left and infra scrap. Um, you can always expedite it and say, hey, work here as a priority. But given that there's almost nothing left to do on this system, um, I'm not going to expedite it. I don't think it's all that necessary. And as you can see, I'm, I'm building up a healthy amount of uh, blocks for to spare. Here is the new ship. Let's see what they have. They almost have no credits whatsoever. But they are willing to um, buy monster meat. <laughs> um, all right. I'm actually not even going to bother trading with them. Really, we are scrapping as much as we can. Bye-bye, Nomad. And this is probably a good look at what the ship looks like right now. Very basic footprint. There's obviously no weapons or shields or anything like that. But I do hope to add to it soon. Uh, so, as far as salvage goes, we're done. Unless I want to take... I guess I could take the monster meat as a trade item. Well, no, not this time. I'm just going to get going. So, uh, they are going to go to sleep here in a... Se oh, no, this is a... Okay. Let's prepare for travel. As you can see, my weight is going up. Um, critical resources low. Water. Yes, I do, in fact, need water. I have very limited amount of ice. And it's going to keep warning me about that, isn't it? That's okay. I do believe the next jump I have... Well, it could be a water jump. Or I could jump this direction. I'll probably jump that direction. Uh, what I'm going to do is for the water purifier so it doesn't bother me continuously. If less than 10... That wasn't 10... If less than 10, make water. And that should keep them from, uh, uh, for bugging me too much. Now it does, um, the toilet does make usable water, uh, eventually. So, I believe, yeah, we're ready to jump. Let's go for the jump. And... I'm going to head to the derelict once again, because I don't really have a lot of manufacturing capability. It's best if I turn scrap. All that's here is one mining job and for uh, energy and the derelict. I think it's a, just about a brand new day, but I'm just about out of time for this episode. So I hope that I covered a lot of the rhyme and reason as to why I built the ship the way I built it. Again, it isn't min-maxed. It isn't a great use of space. There is things to improve, but that's part of the wonderful thing about this game is as you learn, the game doesn't penalize you for making inefficient choices up front. You can just keep um, modifying your ship to suit your needs uh, better and better and better. Uh, next episode, I suspect I'm going to add more manufacturing to the ship, possibly some weapons, definitely some sleepers to make sure I can do um, solar system or system to system hyperspace jumps. If you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me, do drop me a line in the comments below. I've found them quite helpful so far. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this one. 
I'll catch you all next episode. Adios.